Welcome back to the Youth Bible in One Year, day 137. Today we will explore what it means to know God as Father. We'll look at how our understanding of God as Father affects our relationship with Him and how we can grow in our knowledge of Him. What's the best thing in life? Bringing more joy, delight and contentment than anything else. Knowledge of God. What were you made for? To know God. What aim should you set yourself in life? To know God. These are the questions J.I. Packer raises at the start of his influential book, Knowing God. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and my sheep know me just as the Father knows me and I know the Father. From Psalm 62. Yes, my soul, find rest in God. My hope comes from Him. Truly, He is my rock and my salvation. He is my fortress. I shall not be shaken. My salvation and my honour depend on God. He is my mighty rock, my refuge. Trust in Him at all times, you people. Pour out your hearts to Him, for God is our refuge. Trust Him at all times. It is easy to trust God when things are going well. David urges, trust in, lean on, rely on, and have confidence in Him at all times. Trusting God at all times means trusting Him not only when things are going well, but also when things are not going so well. You develop character by trusting Him when you are facing difficulties in your life. Knowing and trusting God leads to First, soul rest. In the midst of all your fears and anxieties, you can find peace. My soul rests in God alone. Find rest, O my soul, in God alone. Second, salvation. Salvation comes by faith in God. My salvation comes from Him. He alone is my rock and my salvation. My salvation and my honour depend on God. Third, security. Everything else in life is uncertain and ultimately insecure. But God is my fortress. I shall never be shaken. He is my mighty rock, my refuge. Like Jesus, David contrasts the love of God with money. Though your riches increase, do not set your heart on them. When I started practicing as a barrister, I wrote this in the margin of my Bible. This is a vital message for me at this time. It was easy in student days not to think about money. But now that money started to come in, I find myself thinking about it more and more, talking about it more and more. The battle is fierce. The pull of the world is so strong. Either you set your heart on God or on money. Father, may my soul find rest in you alone. Thank you that you promise that I will never be shaken. I trust in you today. New Testament, from John 9 and 10. Jesus heard that they had thrown him out, and when he found him, he said, Do you believe in the Son of Man? Who is he, sir? the man asked. Tell me, so that I may believe in him. Jesus said, You have now seen him. In fact, he is the one speaking with you. Then the man said, Lord, I believe, and he worshipped him. Very truly I tell you, Pharisees, Anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate, but climbs in by some other way, is a thief and a robber. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep listen to his voice. His sheep follow him, because they know his voice. Therefore Jesus said again, Very truly I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. Whoever enters through me will be saved. The thief only comes to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life, and have it to the full. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand is not the shepherd, and does not own the sheep. So when he sees the wolf coming, he abandons the sheep and runs away. I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep, and my sheep know me. Just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that are not of this sheepfold, I must bring them also. 
they too will listen to my voice, and there shall be one flock and one shepherd. The reason my father loves me is that I lay down my life only to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have authority to lay it down and authority to take it up again. This command I received from my father. Enjoy life in all its fullness. I thought that becoming a Christian would mean the end to my enjoyment of life. In fact, I found the opposite. Jesus says he came that we might enjoy life and have it in abundance, to the full, till it overflows. The man healed of blindness had no trouble believing in Jesus. When Jesus finds him and says, Do you believe in the Son of Man? He asks, Who is he, sir? Tell me so that I may believe in him. Jesus replies, You have now seen him. In fact, he's the one you're speaking with. Then the man said, Lord, I believe, and he worshipped him. In Jesus, the man realized that he'd encountered God himself. You too can encounter God in Jesus. Jesus explains how through him you can know God. He uses two analogies. First, he speaks of himself as the gate. The Greek word thura is perhaps better translated as the door. Jesus is the door for the sheep to come in and find salvation. He's the door to the Father. The door to knowing God is to know Jesus. The second analogy Jesus uses is that of the good shepherd. The Greek word for good, kalos, means beautiful, noble, wonderful. The sheep know the shepherd. I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and my sheep know me, just as the Father knows me and I know the Father. The background to this is that God himself is described as the shepherd in the Old Testament. To know Jesus is to know God. Enjoy fullness of life. In a relationship with Jesus, you find meaning, purpose, fulfillment, peace, forgiveness, and life in all its fullness. Don't let the devil rob you. Jesus contrasts himself with the thief who comes to steal, kill, and destroy. The devil wants to rob you of your peace and enjoyment of life. Don't let him. Be assured of God's love for you. Jesus also contrasts the good shepherd and the hired hand, who when the wolf attacks the flock, runs away because he cares nothing for the sheep. On the other hand, the good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. This is entirely voluntary. The reason my father loves me is that I lay down my life, only to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. If you ever doubt that God loves you, you simply have to look at the cross. Jesus laid down his life for you. Jesus came to give his life on the cross to take away all the blocks that prevent you knowing and being in communion with God as your Father. Learn to listen to his voice. It is in the instinctive nature of sheep to recognize the shepherd's voice. The sheep listen to his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he's brought out all of his own, he goes on ahead of them and his sheep follow him because they know his voice. The more you get to know Jesus, the more you will get to discern whether it is his voice rather than the deceptive voice of the wolf. Know that you have eternal life. The one you know not only dies for you, but he also rises from the dead for you. He has the power to take his life again. I have authority to lay it down and authority to take it up again. He gives you eternal life. Jesus later defines eternal life like this. Now this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. Lord, thank you that you love me so much that you laid down your life for me. Thank you that you give me life, and life in all its fullness. Old Testament From Ruth 3 and 4. So Boaz took Ruth, and she became his wife. When he made love to her, the Lord enabled her to conceive, and she gave birth to a son. The woman said to Naomi, Praise be to the Lord, who this day has not left you without a guardian redeemer. May he become famous throughout Israel. He will renew your life and sustain you in your old age. For your daughter-in-law, who loves you and who is better to you than seven sons, has given him birth. Then Naomi took the child in her arms and cared for him. The woman living there said, Naomi has a son, and they named him Obed. He 
was the father of Jesse, the father of David. Honour God in all circumstances. God honours those who honour him and do what is right, even when it's costly to do so, and even through the trials and difficulties of life. We see how each of the main characters honours the Lord, Naomi, Ruth and Boaz. They're great models for us to follow. The book of Ruth begins with Naomi, despairing of the kindness of God. She then experiences many of the people around her displaying great human kindness. She experiences it in her two daughters-in-law, Ruth and Orpah, and in Boaz's treatment of Ruth. Finally, she declares he has not stopped showing his kindness to the living and the dead. Ruth obeys her mother-in-law in every detail. Naomi's concern is wholly for Ruth's well-being. Boaz is self-controlled, generous and honourable. Boaz's life is obviously God-centred. His immediate reaction when he wakes up and sees Ruth is, The Lord bless you. And as the Lord lives. Yesterday, we saw how Ruth honoured the Lord and did the right thing by being loyal to her mother-in-law. Today, we see how Boaz clearly wanted to marry Ruth and felt it was the right thing, yet did not simply go ahead, as he could have done on the basis of the end justifying the means. He was completely upright in the way he approached the matter, abiding by the etiquette and traditions of the culture. Boaz did not just rush ahead and get married. He went through the correct process. Humanly speaking, he was taking a great risk and might have lost Ruth, but he trusted that the Lord was in control. The Lord honoured this in an amazing and wonderful way. Boaz and Ruth were married and gave birth to the grandfather of King David. Indeed, Ruth, the servant girl, became an ancestor of the Lord Jesus Christ. In one sense, Jesus is our kinsman redeemer. He calls us his brothers and sisters, understands our struggles, and acts to redeem us. We see the kindness of God throughout the book of Ruth. Behind the human kindness of Ruth, Naomi, and Boaz lies the kindness of God. Father, thank you for your amazing kindness to me. Thank you for redeeming me. Give me courage to honour you always and to seek to do the right thing, even when that is difficult. Pippa adds, John 10 verse 10 is one of my favourite verses. I have come that you might have life and life to all its fullness. The Bible has great power. It is through someone showing me this verse many years ago that I first encountered a relationship with Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Lord, help me to know you as Father. Help me to recognize who you are in my life. And help me to know the power that knowing that has. Fill me again today. In Jesus' name. Amen.